I don't like to replay most games. It's probably just the personal quirk, but there must be some logical reason as to why. Some games I find difficult to replay even years after I beat them, but there are some types of games that are easy to pick up and play at any time. Certain types of games are just much more suited for playing repeatedly, and the reasons behind that are really interesting, so I want to explore that. Games that are much more suited for replaying are full of options and choices for the player, and those options add new content to the game. For me, in general, if a game is not designed to provide a different experience, no matter how slight from the last time you played it, I can't maintain my interest for any significant amount of time. Video games aren't like movies, books, or music. You can't rewatch a movie from a different character's point of view, and you certainly can't get a high score in a book. The only thing different when re-experiencing those mediums is the viewer's mindset, not the actual content. Games are special because they can be experienced differently by every person who plays them, and even then, some players can go back into the same game and play it in a completely different manner. I've got a lot to cover in this video, so let's move on from the intro and get right into some details. Individual concepts found within games all work towards one factor, potential new material. For short, let's call it PNM. The main point to take away from this is that people replay games to experience them in some new way, and that is potential new material. Potential new material is one of two types, developer created or player created. Developer created is just that, the intentions of the creators that they programmed into their game. Player created is essentially a fan-made expansion pack for their game. Although not necessarily in reference to mods, the players make their own rules and their own adjustments to games that they love or hate to make them better and more enjoyable, but in the end, they're always creating some sort of new experience. Different types of games have different amounts and types of PNM, which in turn contributes to how enjoyable they are when replayed. To illustrate this point, let's go into some concrete examples. Although I'm not one myself, I assume that developers go into creating a new game with the goal of making something that isn't just thrown away when it's beaten. So they program different options into their games that will allow players to play a different experience each time they play the same game. Character classes are a staple of RPG and strategy games, meaning you can replay a game with different stat specialties and abilities. A large percentage of games allow for different playable characters, offering different stories, abilities, or simply a different physical appearance than that of other characters. Certain games function around maps that aren't connected to each other, like racing games or fighting games, which offer different hazards, items, or landscapes. You also have difficulty levels. Some games have difficulty levels that apply to the whole game, while others let you choose on a level-to-level -level basis. Developers really like giving players choices in their games, and in the end it's just great for us because it gives us more stuff to play. If you've played any arcade or mobile game, you're definitely familiar with the concept of a high score. Points, times, and collectibles are simple and effective ways of showcasing just how damn good we are at our favorite games. The fact that our ability can be shown in such a clear and unmistakable fashion is why we continually try to outdo ourselves and others by, say, beating boss rush mode on insane difficulty with no potions. Ever since developers started adding online leaderboards to their games, we all became competitive, arrogant grumble snaps who aren't as good as we think we are. We all want to improve, but some people are just willing to spend more time on some games than others. This next concept is probably the most time-consuming of them all, depending on how much effort you decide to dedicate to a game. Unlockables come in many forms. Items, characters, achievements, pretty much everything I've talked about up to this point. Unlockables can be new content themselves, or just trinkets that mean nothing. The great thing about unlockables is that the rewards often become more PNM themselves. Plus, even if the reward is lackluster, the game had you achieve a certain set of conditions, meaning you were given an incentive to try a playstyle you weren't familiar with, like using a specific weapon at a certain time of day while holding your console upside down. The rewards all share a common trait. They are given to a player upon the completion of a task or upon the completion of a certain number of a certain task. These tasks range from killing enemies, traveling distances, collecting treasures, or simply playing the game for 750 hours. You might be thinking, that's all fine and dandy, but why would I want to play a game for 750 hours for a golden pickle statue? 
Well, there are some people out there that can't bear the thought of not having completed the game 100%. This refers back to the idea of wanting to improve upon oneself. What better way to improve yourself than to literally do everything in a game ever? Unfortunately for these perfectionists, there exists a devilish tactic that forces them to play a game over and over in order to achieve the lofty goal of 100%. This little underhanded trick developers add to their games are what I call one chance wonders. Most common in very linear games, these wonders can be an item, a character, or a cutscene. Pretty much anything that's unlockable can be a wonder, so long as you can miss it if you advance too far past the time the reward was made available. Making a reward available for only a limited amount of time means the players have to be very meticulous, or they have to consult a walkthrough if they want to complete a game on the first try. Most people aren't so meticulous, forcing them to restart their game to get those rewards. Another tactic developers employ to add PM is multiple endings. Since endings are the last thing you experience in a game, you have no choice but to restart. Some games have endings that work independently of each other, but some games like to have 16 ambiguous endings and one good ending that requires all other 16 to unlock. Why do I keep playing those games? Basically, One Chance Wonders are restrictions that designers put in their games so that players are sufficiently motivated to replay them. In that spirit, we have New Game Plus, an emerging trend in recent years. This mode is commonly associated with allowing you to carry over your skills and items to a new file, making it easier to blow through difficult sections and challenges early on in the game. Intense difficulty levels can be unlocked to counter the advantage of possessing all of your upgrades. When used effectively, New Game Plus is a great way to allow players to max out every upgrade, complete every achievement, making the game feel new and exciting right from the get-go. At this point, I've covered everything that can really be added to a game by the developers, and I've reached the dark, expansive vacuum which is player-created PNM. Let me ask you, as a player, what your goal is when starting up a new game. Do you want to beat the single player? How about playing some matches in multiplayer? Do you want to make your own stages in the customizer? How about all those options? Every single person who plays a game goes into it with a different goal in mind, and that goal will change as they play the game. They might want to quit because the game is not to their liking, or maybe they want to go back and play on an easier difficulty level. The mindset of the player is what determines the choices the player makes when they go back into a game. They now know the major plot points, item locations, and the best tactics, so they can approach the game in a much more efficient way than they did previously. Really, the mindset of the player determines how they will use the content found in the game. A competitive fighting game player will skip story mode and use a training or versus mode to practice, and a person who just wants to experience the story will play on the easiest difficulty level. The games that are the most replayable are the ones that offer the most choices for how to approach them. Minecraft is an obvious example for this because of its do-whatever-the-hell-you-want attitude. The game had no restrictions and it rose to popularity for that very reason. The tough thing about being a developer of any kind of media is that there will always be a small group of fans that weren't quite satisfied with your work. Thankfully, some fans are very talented and make adjustments to pre-existing games, much like remixes for songs and fan fictions for every story ever. One way of altering a game is to make a mod of it. Some fans make remakes of their favorite games, like updating a 2D classic by making it 3D, or by adding silly guns to their favorite FPS. Fans either eliminate annoying issues, or they add entirely new mechanics that completely shift the dynamic of the original game. Some full games come out of particularly ambitious player mods. In that case, hasn't the player become the developer? Does that mean player-created PNM can become developer-created PNM? What about a mod of a mod? Technically savvy people aren't satisfied with the restrictions placed upon them by code, so they write their own. But what about the people who can't program? Another common practice is to make sets of rules that exist only to the player, a set of rules that they made to challenge themselves. Nuzlocke challenges are an emerging trend in the Pokemon world, where players must release their Pokemon upon fainting. Another example is beating the original Zelda without taking a sword, forcing the player to learn how to use items effectively like the boomerang or the bow. Each set of rules changes the game much like a mod would, but the main difference being that mods add new content, while player-created rules limit existing content to create a new sensation. At this point, everything I've mentioned in regards to the player has been focused on the individual player. 
but games have offered the option of multiplayer for decades now, and this video wouldn't be complete if I didn't touch on it. I talked about how every player brings a different mindset to the table when playing games, so multiplayer is the way that different players interact to achieve their goals. Some games are designed around multiplayer, meaning there isn't a separate mode for it. Those games are often cooperative or semi-cooperative, meaning players help each other towards a common goal, like defeating a boss, while competing for a secondary goal, like getting the most points. In a situation like that, some players may be striving for points, while some might be simply trying to stay alive. Each player has a different goal, but they are all forced to work together. A weaker player might be assigned easier tasks by more experienced players, or the group may band together to ensure that they all survive. The scenario will play out differently depending on who is playing with who. Competitive games are obviously very different because the opposition you face is human. In single player games, you are confronted with enemies controlled by a computer who is unable to plan ahead and react as quickly as you can, who slowly grows more intelligent and powerful as you progress. Competitive games pit the skills and decisions of players against other players, and those differences result in unpredictable games that are unlikely to become repetitive, assuming the game offers enough options to the players. The rise of online games meant that players could play the same map with the same weapons over and over without getting bored, because they would always have someone new to play against. That is assuming there are people online to play with. Online multiplayer takes the amount of PNM in a game and raises it to the nth degree. This would certainly explain the large popularity of MMOs today. Now, as you may have realized, this video is pretty much comprised of me listing different types of content and choices offered in games that make them worth replaying, but I didn't actually go into detailed examples for specific games. Obviously, different types of games have different types and amounts of developer-created PNM, and player-created PNM is really only limited by the player's imagination. The more PNM a game has, the more enjoyable it is to replay it, but that is by no means the only factor. PNM is a factor that promotes replaying, but there are also factors that hinder the replayability of a game. I think we can all agree that a game you hated is not at the top of your list for re replaying because it either played badly, looked terrible, or simply bored you. But good games are sometimes hard to replay as well. There are lots of different factors, and off the top of my head, game length and a high story to gameplay ratio come to mind. You might find it less enjoyable to replay certain games when you know every major plot point and character, and it's obviously much harder to replay a 60 hour RPG than it is to beat a 10 level flash game. Games that offer quick missions or matches as opposed to lengthy story driven quests are much more replayable because of how much less time they require. Games that have optional cutscenes and tutorials let people jump right back into the games and replay them whenever they feel like it, which are characteristics found much more often in simple platforming and puzzle games. Those games tend to be very successful on handheld and mobile platforms because of how easy they are to pick up and play. So while one person may replay a long story focused game to master the gameplay, many other people will opt instead to play a puzzle game like Bejeweled or Tetris because they don't have to invest as much of their time. Replaying games requires a lot of time that could be spent elsewhere, namely playing other newer games. Yet instead of going out and buying new games, people replay old ones. Humans like new things, so why not play new and exciting releases? Well, games are expensive, and people are also afraid of buying pieces of garbage, so they stick to what they know. That's why people replay games, to play them as if they are a brand new experience. But you don't need to play as a different character or go for a high score just to experience that sensation of originality. You can grab some friends who haven't played your favorite game before and watch them play it. You'll see them having fun and you'll laugh and curse alongside them. You can go back and play a game you'd forgotten about and remember the good parts while discovering the parts you never saw before. Going back into a game for nostalgia's sake is simply replaying a game with the intention of appreciating it with a more mature mind. By replaying games, we learn to appreciate what made them great in the first place. Games are like any other form of art. There is the good and the bad, and the good art requires multiple observations to fully understand. And that's my video. Thanks for watching, and I'd appreciate any feedback or comments people have in my drawings as well as my ideas. Again, thanks for watching, and have a great day.